Last week's video was all about how we got started at Cisco. What were the things that we did at the very beginning of our journey to reinvent, if you like, the world of work? And um, in particular, what did we get going on the third day? And how that sat on top of um, a body of work that both Marcus Buckingham and I had been doing for several years. Uh, we've had a number of questions come in, and so what I thought I'd do today is pick a few. We won't be able to answer all of them, unfortunately, but pick a few and um, see what we have to say. So let's get going. First question today is from Douglas. Douglas, thank you for your question. Um, and Douglas writes, um, view the video, purchase the book. Um, um, I'm a team of 43 folks in Toronto, um, and... Uh, dealing with mortgage brokers, working our way through a recession, so, so a tough economic environment, um, struggling with overall engagement for the team. How do, how do we increase that? Uh, one area is team building events and Christmas parties. How do I get more folks to show up to those? What can I do as a leader to start spreading more enthusiasm through the group to increase the overall engagement? So, Douglas, first thing I would say is that there is a really important difference between enthusiasm and engagement. We'd all love to have lots of enthusiasm, but when we're talking about engagement and the sort of things we talked about in the best team study, we're not actually talking about enthusiasm, although that might be part of it. We're talking about a specific set of conditions that you can create on one of your teams that lead to greater outcomes for individuals, greater outcomes for your organization. So what are those characteristics? Well, there's a, there are sort of two groups, if you like. The first is the sense for each individual on the team that they are called upon to do their best work every day, that they, they get to do what they do best, that they have um, a clear set of expectations as how to their, how their best is, is asked for by the team. They see recognition when they do great work and they're challenged to grow. So a whole bunch of individual things, and we call those the best of me. So first job for a team leader is figure out how to draw out the best of each person and put that to productive use on the team. The second group of things is more collective. Am I surrounded by people who have my back? Do these people believe in the same things in terms of quality of work and um, quality of outcomes that I do? Do I connect that sense of quality and support to the larger organization beyond me? Those things we call the best of we. And so the job of a team leader, the, the job number one, if you like, for the team leader is to connect each person, who they are as an individual, what they do at their best, what they're geeked about, what they're energized by, to the work of the team to enable this sense of support. And then beyond that, to the work of the organization. Um, and the way that you do this is you talk to people frequently about their work, and in those conversations, you're asking what's what matters to you this week, what's in front of you, what help do you need from me, the team leader, what help might I be able to get you from your teammates? And in doing that, what you're ultimately trying to do is to locate the person, the beautiful individuality of the person, find that expressed in their work and connect that work to the work of the team and to the work of the organization overall. Um, that's engagement. It might also lead to enthusiasm and greater attendance levels at team building events and more people showing up at the Christmas party. Um, but the point is that we don't need people to show up at parties. There are some of us who like going to parties. There are some of us who frankly don't like going to parties. What we need to do as team leaders is to connect each person's individuality and energy to the work that they do every day, to the work of the team, to the work of the organization. And what all the research tells us is that that's what constitutes engagement and that's what leads to the outcomes we're all trying to drive. So I hope that was helpful. Thanks for your question. Um, second question today uh, is from um, Rudiger, and I'm sorry if I just wrecked your name there, but Rudiger asks, um, what are some of the tools you've invested in? What did you get? How did you get the agreement of your employees to track real-time data? Um, and also Jorge asks, um, you invested in tools for teams and their leaders. Can you give us some examples of those? So if if the conversation, to go back to Douglas's question, if the conversation is 
um, frequently a team leader to a team member about the work that they're doing every day, then a good tool will nudge that conversation. A good tool will make that conversation more intelligent. In other words, a good tool will start from the human interaction, um, a team leader talking to a team member, and will try and make it more effective, pointed in the right direction, set the stage, if you like, for that. So uh, we'll talk about more about this in later videos, but um, one of the things that our software does, and it's a piece of software called Standout from ADP, um, is that every at the end of every week, a team member goes in to a system and goes, here's what I need from my team leader. Here's what I loved and loathed about the last week. So we can begin to see the individual uh, and their, their emotional relationship to their work. Um, here's, here are my priorities for the next week. Um, so a few simple questions that, if you like, set the stage for a human conversation that will happen in the next, in the next few days. So what we're using the technology for is not to come down the organization and land on the team member. Here are the activities you must do this week. Here's what you must log into the system and, and do. We're, we're, not, we're not pushing down. The conversation isn't even team leader to team member. The conversation is driven by the team member them at work, their needs, their wishes, their hopes, their sense of priorities, whatever they want to talk about in those buckets. And so what our, what our tools are trying to do, and we, we're working on other examples of the same thought, how do you locate a team member in their work digitally in order to enable a more productive and more intelligent human, or human interaction? Our tools are pushing on that, and our tools, therefore, are bottom-up tools. They are not top-down tools. If you start designing a tool by asking yourself, what does the organization need the employee to do? Very often you finish up making something which is of no particular use to the employee because actually it's, its use is for somebody else. When, however, you, you ask a different question, um, what can we do in our, in our software and our technology to help people express themselves at work, to help them get what they need to do better work, then you start designing a different sort of technology. And the litmus test for whether you've got it right is whether people use the technology frequently without being asked to do so. So frequent, uncoerced, voluntary usage of a technology tells you that you have, to some extent, managed to locate something that's useful for people. If you can get that, if you can get frequent, uncoerced use of a tool, then you can start to say, okay, what are the patterns of data in this tool? What can we tell a team leader about the patterns of interaction on their teams? What can we see in the organization level? So, for example, at Cisco, um, our, our conversation is called a check-in. We ask everybody to do one every week. It's a bottoms-up process. But now we can look at the team leaders and go, how many uh, check-ins are they responding to? How many conversations are they having? Then we can take that data and scale it up the organization. We can then look at the relationship between check-in frequency and the engagement of the team, the things that we were talking about a moment ago uh, in response to Douglas. So if we have tools that get voluntary use because they're useful to the people doing the work, then we get good data. Then we can see patterns of behavior. Then we can see whether team leaders and organizational leaders are driving the change we want them to. So. Um, that's one example of the tools that we're that we've uh, introduced and and we're continuing to push on the standard for a piece of technology to help work is does it help the people doing the work if not try something else if it does we're on to something um so anyway thank you both for those questions and then the last one i thought we'd hit today uh elise elise thank you for your question it's great to hear from you again um, Elise asks, do you make it possible for people to choose the teams and projects they work on, or are they all assigned? Um, don't know how that would work for Cisco. Would love to hear if you've tried it. I think our answer right now is yes to a certain extent, and plus, we want to do a lot more of this. 
So in any large organization, um, if you if you live inside a large organization, you'll know very well what I'm talking about. You have a reasonable degree of latitude about what team you work on because you can move to a different team. You can apply for a role on a different team. A team leader has to sort of sell you on the role, recruit you into that role. Um, and very often, in again, in large organizations, lots of the work is done, as we've discovered at Cisco, on dynamic teams where if you remember, when we counted all of our teams, we found one third of them roughly weren't on the org chart. And they were doing pieces of work that were not assigned in the org chart in the static hierarchy, but rather were created as cross-functional projects. Sometimes people get invited to join them. Sometimes they volunteer to join them. Sometimes they get them through their network. So we have some of that. Um, what we're pushing on right now is how do we get an awful lot more? How do we enable people to go and do the work that fills them up the most, knowing that that work sometimes isn't immediately visible to them where they're sitting at a particular time. So uh, we've tried, um, we've had a very successful series of experiments with something that we call Talent Expo, where we take uh, a group of employees, team members with a similar sort of background skills profile. Let's say they're all project managers. We also find a group of team leaders who are in need of project managers for the work that they're leading right now. And we f facilitate a couple of days events where say 200 project managers, 200 team leaders get together. We help all of the team members tell their career story. Uh, so we, we coach them on how to tell the story of where they've been, where they're going, what they want next. And we set up a series of, of sort of speed interviews, if you like, with the, with the team leaders. And we found that that is very, a very effective way of accelerating mobility in the organization. We want to do a lot more. We want to ask ourselves now, how do you digitize this? And how do you do it, obviously, in a way that serves the team members uh, most readily? So how can we see from your um, social network? We're doing a lot of work with social network analysis. How can we infer from that by the network that you're on, the network that you're in, the team that you're on, the sorts of things that you're doing, what, what skills you might have, and also what skills you might like to acquire? What are the useful adjacencies for you in your career? How can we make opportunities more visible and transparent to you? So we're, we're, we're working at this, and what we're doing is we're trying to start very small. We're, we're, not, we're trying to steer clear of a big skills assessment, for example, that would feel, again, like the organization coming down on me and saying, you have to fill in this form and tell us everything you, you can do. Um, how can we do that digitally and intelligently so that we take that work away from you? How can we give you, the team member, the job of expressing your aspiration and expressing that maybe in terms of um, some words or maybe in terms of some roles that you're interested in. Again, if we can animate the wishes and the hopes of our team members, digitize those, plug them into a system which has some sense of the available opportunities in the organization, then we think we can massively accelerate mobility across Cisco. Um, not there yet, but that's what we're working on. So at any rate, those were three more questions this week. Uh, tune into next week's video. It'll post again uh, a week from today. And I'll be back after that with the answers to some more of your questions. So please do keep them coming. Thanks very much.